Hi, my name is Blaine Roski. I'm Director of Product Management with Brocade's Data Center Storage and Solutions Group. I'm joined here today with uh, Anthony Paris, also Director of Product Management with Brocade's uh, Data Center Storage and Solutions team. We're developing a series of technical videos aimed at educating viewers on some of the unique capabilities and characteristics of Brocade's SAN platforms. Today we're going to be taking a look at ultrascale inner chassis links or ultrascale ICLs. Kind of looking at what they are, the value that they provide to customers, how to configure them, how to, uh, to monitor, how you deploy them in a data center environment. So Anthony, uh, let, let's get right into it. What are ultrascale ICLs, inner chassis links? What are they? How are they used? What products are they available on? Uh, tell us a little bit about them. Sure, Blaine. So inter chassis links or ICLs on the Brocade 8510 director class products uh, we have the four chassis, the four slot chassis and the eight slot chassis. They are unique ports used to connect two chassis together. They are optical in nature and they are built into the core routing blades of the chassis. So they come by default when you purchase either the eight slot or the four slot chassis mm -hmm. and uh, they are highly reliable optical ports that's uh, available to you for this purpose. Okay, so each, each one of these QSFP ports is uh, is a 16 gig connection or what's, what's the configuration? So each one of these ports can do four by 16, so essentially 64 gigs of uh, bandwidth, each one of those ports. So on, and so on the eight slot box then you've got 32, 32 ports, open. so 32 by 64 gig. Yes, so there are 32 ports on the eight slot box and uh, uh, and uh, 16 ports on the four slot box. Split over the two core routing blades Split on each chassis. Split over the two core routing blades on uh -huh. each chassis. So eight each um, on the core routing blade on the four slot and 16 each on the eight slot. Okay. And these optical ICLs can span up to 100 meters with OM4 fiber. So since they're optical, they, they are more reliable and give you the better distance uh, that's uh, that's needed. So 100 meter distance that allows connections within a, a data center, you know, rack to rack, uh, probably even almost room to room, depending on the, the Depending the on the customer configuration, mm -hmm. customer topology, and uh, the layout they have in the data center, yes, that's possible. So um, why, why would customers use these ultra scale ICLs? What's, what's the advantage? I mean, you can do for inner, uh, inner switch links, ISLs, you can use a normal front end port, you can connect up two chassis together. Why use these ICLs instead of just an ISL? So think about it, Blaine, that's the beauty of it. With inter chassis links, you're freeing up all your port blades. Now these are port blades, this is a 32 port blade and this is a 48 port blade right. that uh -huh. you can use to connect your servers or storage. Now you're freeing up all those port blades that are going to be available for these eight slots because uh, you are not going to waste any of those ports for inter-switch links, ISLs. Uh -huh. So what we found out is about, depending on the customer configuration, up to 10 to 30 percent of those ports can be saved with inter-chassis links. Okay, because so typically if a customer is deploying a chassis like this and they have X many uh, hosts or servers or, or storage devices attached in, they have to allocate a good portion of those front end ports to connect up to the other switches in the fabric, and therefore you're going to need either additional port blades or maybe another chassis to get those additional front end ports. Exactly. So, so what we have found out is it can be up to 30%. And furthermore, not, not just the port blades, think about it, you're going to save on the cabling as well. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if you're going to use ISLs, you're going to use 16 gig is the maximum bandwidth that you can have for each of those uh, ports. Right, and you'll right. be using uh, 16 cables, I mean, uh, you'll be using cables for each of that 16 gig stream. So Whereas that, with so ICLs, four of those 16 gig, it's, it's collapsed into one. Coming out of the exactly. Box. Gotcha. Right. So, so that's a big advantage in cable reduction as well. And we found out about 75% uh, of the cables could be reduced this way. Okay. And uh, uh, the other thing is, uh, you know, bandwidth and reliability. So with a high bandwidth, each port is capable of 64 gig and, and for inter-switch inter connectivity, mm -hmm. high, ga high bandwidth is a requirement to, uh, to be able to connect these huge pipes that are aggregating the server and the server, server uh, traffic sure, that's coming sure. in. And also uh, it creates lower latency and allows you to have fabric topologies that have not been able, that you have not been able to uh, create before. So, like, so expand uh, on that a little. So, so like uh, traditionally we have core edge topologies in the data center where your core switches are attached to the storage, your edge switches are attached to the host and the servers. Right. So what do you mean by this mesh topology? So, uh, so with a mesh topology, what I mean is you can create a mesh of these chassis connected together with ICLs, mm -hmm. with optical ICLs. 
and have a storage and service connected anywhere in that mesh as opposed to connecting those storage in the core in a traditional coage topology where you're limited to that core for storage connectivity. Okay, so now all you of your have, chassis are connected to every other chassis in the environment, full, fully meshed together. Exactly. So this way, your hops from your server to the storage could be dramatically reduced because you can have only just one hop from your server to the storage. Right, anywhere creating, and anywhere in the entire fabric. Right, and creating very low latency within the fabric right. itself. Right. This, I mean, we can have uh, nine chassis in a mesh topology created using ICLs and 10 chassis in a co-edge topology uh, with ICLs. And that's the current uh, tested topology by Brocade. That's a uh, currently and tested. Potentially uh, could scale out even beyond we can that in the future. Potentially scale out even beyond further, um, you know, provided that we test it out. Okay, that, make, that makes a lot of sense. So can you tell me, Anthony, what are the specific components that a customer needs? They've got their DCX 8510. What do they need to actually deploy these ultra-scale ICLs? Sure. So um, when one purchases the chassis, these ports uh, are available to them with the core routing blade. But to enable those ports for ICL purposes, they have to purchase what is called an ICL kit. Okay, so the ports are physically there on the core blade, so every DCX 8510, the four slot and the eight slot, come with the physical ports. Correct. But in able to actually use them and connect chassis with them, you need one of these kits. Correct. So there's a, there's a kit, that which, is, which is called the ICL kit, mm -hmm. that has a license that enables 16 ports and 16 quad SFPs uh, with that. Okay, so 16 ports, that's all the ports on the four slot box, Correct. but only half of the ports on the eight slot right, box. Right, so you need two of those kits to enable all the ports on the eight slot box. Okay, two of the kits, gotcha, right. okay. But and, you can uh, enable only half of them if you want on the, yeah, on the eight slot absolutely. box if you want to use absolutely. just half of them. So if you, if you enable half of those ports, it'll be eight ports on each core routing blade that will be enabled. Okay. Uh, and to enable the, all the ports, you, you need to have two kits. Two kits, and then you're fully got all the ICL port uh, capabilities there. Okay. Correct. And uh, to connect the two chassis together, uh, two or more chassis that you want to connect with uh, ICL links, mm -hmm. you need to purchase either OM3 or OM4 one by 12 OM uh, MTP cables. Okay. And um, now it depends on the distance whether you choose OM3 or OM4. So the OM3 for shorter distance connections between the chassis yeah, and, and exactly OM3 is needed if your distance requirement is less than 50 meters. Uh -huh. You can use OM4 as well for that, but uh, OM4 is definite requirement if the distance requir uh, required is more than 50 meters and up to 100 meters. Up to 100 meter. Okay. And I have a cable here as well. This is an MTP, 1x12 MTP ribbon cable. Mm -hmm. uh, these are available through our cable vendors as well as through our OEMs. Um, and um, these, uh, the part numbers for these are available in the FAQ that's um, at brocade.com as well. Okay. So the QSFPs are the same for 50 meter versus 100 meter or, or different QSFPs? The QSFPs are the same okay. for the 100 meters. Um, and uh, this is something new. When we launched the product initially, we had a 50 meter quad SFP. Okay, so the uh, 8510 supported up to 50, up meter to 50 meters at, at its debut, and it's and been increased up to 100, 100 meter meters if you're using the OM4 cable. That's correct. So, Anthony, how do the uh, ultra scale ICLs work? Can you tell us a little bit about kind of internally the connections and, and how they actually work? Sure, sure. Um, so, each quad SFP optical cable bundles four 16 gig links. They are four 16 gig channels, as I mentioned before. So, that's mm -hmm. actually 64 gigs in each port. Each channel is an independent fiber channel port. So there are indi four independent fiber channel ports in each physical quad SFP port. Now, when you look at the core routing blade, uh, each core blade has groups of eight ports and we call these trunking boundary cages. These eight groups are called trunking boundary cages. Now each boundary cage has eight QSFP ports that communicate back to the Condor 3 ASIC on each core routing blade. And the core routing blades, depending on the chassis, depending on the model, uh, has up to four ASICs in there. So for example, the CR168, which is on the eight slot chassis, has four Condor 3 ASICs in it. And the CR164, which is on the four slot chassis, has two Condor 3 ASICs in it. Okay, so the eight slot core blade has two of these eight 
support groups or, or cages, boundary cages, on each one of the core blades. So a total of four, but on the four slot box, there's only one on each one of the core blades. So a Correct. total of two. Total, total okay. of two. So a trunk cannot be formed among the channels within the same quad SFP port. So think about it. If you form a trunk within the same quad SFP, if one of those ports, if, if the physical port fails, all four trunks go down. So your entire so, trunk goes away. Or, right. or your entire trunk goes away. So for that purpose, we require that trunks cannot be formed in one physical port. Okay, so you're so actually to... aggregating some of the links from each of the QSFP ports to form a trunk. So you're grabbing one from each of the, uh, each of the QSFPs. Exactly, okay. exactly. And um, the maximum trunk group is eight quad SFP channels. Mm -hmm. But so you can have less than that. You don't you have can, to have eight. But, you can okay. have less than that, but the maximum is eight. Mm -hmm. And these eight will be spanned across the ports. Okay. And it will give you eight by 128 gigs of bandwidth when they're trunk together. So That's each, the each one of those trunk is eight by, one, 128, eight by 128 gigs. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that makes sense. So, so how would a customer, if you're managing your DCX 8510s, if you're managing these ICLs with the CLI interface or through Network Advisor, for example, what would they look like? What, how, how would you manage them? How would you uh, maintain that, uh, that environment? Yeah, so it's, it's very easy to manage, uh, either via the CLI or through, the, through uh, Network Advisor. And um, what you see here is a, uh, the CLI command license show. As you apply the license, the the license to enable the ICL ports. License show will show you that that license is applied. Now here it shows that uh, two pod licenses are applied uh, for those interchassis links. So this is clearly chassis. an eight slot 8510 then if there's two of them, two of them applied, right? Correct. Now to uh, see the, or view the fiber channel port quad SFP relationships uh, within the chassis, you can use the switch show command with the slot type and the quad SFP relationship uh, specified as shown in this CLI. So as you can see, within that uh, orange cage is the, the represents the trunk cages on the core blades and the corresponding quad SFPs and the ports and the slots associated with them. Okay, so these ICLs, they're showing up, you're seeing each of the individual links displayed kind of independently. It's Correct. recognizing the, uh, the port index number for each one of the links within all of the ICLs. Yes. That's, that's right. And uh, as you can see, it's very intuitive in nature. And uh, to view the quad SFP ICL trunks, you can use the trunk show command in, okay. the, in FOSS ICL, uh, FOSS CLI. And uh, here you see that uh, four ports, the, the difference between ports in the trunk group. Uh, each fiber channel port is in a separate quad SFP port. That's what I was talking about earlier, that okay, they cannot the be on the same. splitting up of the IC, the links within the that's ICL right. to each of the different trunk that's groups. That's right. Uh -huh. so, so that's what's shown in this uh, CLI command trunk show. Okay. So what about, uh, what about Network Advisor, customers yeah. that are managing with uh, Network Advisor? So, so this is a screenshot coming from Network Advisor. Again, it shows uh, the connection between two, two chassis mm -hmm. with uh, interchassis links, and there are about eight of these connections shown there and e the details are on the left hand side and the graphical depiction is shown as well uh, between those two chassis uh, that are having ICL okay. So still very easy to, to monitor and view and do the configuration of, of these ICLs in exactly. Network Advisor. Okay. Exactly. So Blaine, maybe I can uh, turn things around and ask you a question. Uh, could you explain the configuration requirements for ultra scale ICLs? So there's a couple different requirements that we have, and these are requirements as of today. Some of these requirements may change in the future. We might uh, lessen some of the requirements, et cetera, allow a little bit more flexibility. But right now, uh, there's a minimum requirement of four ICL connections between any pair of chassis, and that's got to be divided up uh, between the core blades. So you have to have two from one core blade, Two from the other to connect, connect up. To two. Two, so, yeah. so it can't be, you can't have all four going into the same. Exactly, and that, that's primarily around redundancy, right? If, if there was to be some sort of a problem with one of the core blades and it had to be replaced, uh, you'd want to still have the connectivity between the chassis so you could pull one and then reconnect. So you've that got to have them sense. distributed. So minimum of two from each one. You can then, if you want more bandwidth between the pair of chassis, you can add in increments of two additional ICLs uh, from there. So starting with four minimum, you go up to six or eight or 10 or 12. And, and the, the, the requirement for two additional is again for redundancy purposes? Exactly, right. And again, you distribute that across the core blade. So you could add another one on this core blade, another one on this core blade, and attach it up to another chassis but two at a time is the, is the minimum. I see. I see. Yep. That makes sense. 
And there are, there are requirements as far as how you lay them out. So the physical connections, there's some uh, requirements on the location that you put the ICLs to ensure that those trunk groups that you talked about and explained are formed correctly. So we need to make sure that when you're connecting from one chassis to another, that you uh, basically install the connections and the ICLs in within those same trunk uh, group trunk cage boundaries okay. for the for the connections to work properly and uh, there's more information on that We'll provide a link to that toward the end of this segment to give a little bit more detail that uh, that our viewers can refer to Okay, so now for those customers that have uh, ICLs and ISLs yes. in their same in the same environment uh -huh. Now can they connect two chassis with ICLs and ICLs at the same time? Excellent question and today that is not supported So if you have two chassis connected together, it has to be purely ISL connections your traditional front end port ISLs or ICL. So this is something that you do want to do a little bit of planning in advance. If you're going to connect with ICLs, you want to do that from the start uh, primarily. You can migrate to that. There's ways you can do it, but you can't be running ISLs and ICL connections between the same chassis pair at the same time. Now, if you have other chassis in your environment or maybe fixed port switches, you can certainly be running ICLs between your 8510s and then ISLs from the same box to another switch or another, another uh, DCX8510, for example. So, okay, good, good to know. So, Blaine, maybe you can explain which ICL features are supported by different FOSS features because we introduced ICLs with uh, 7.0, FOSS release 7.0, but since then, I think there were many enhancements done. Could you explain a little bit about the sure, FOSS Sure, sure. Yeah, so uh, like you said, FOSS 7.0, that's where we introduce support for our new Gen 5 platforms, our 16 gig capable Gen 5 platforms, including these DCX 8510s and the ultra scale ICLs. Yeah. The initial support was uh, essentially limited in terms of number of chassis in the topology. So with FOSS 7.0, you could have up to six chassis in a core edge topology or up to three chassis in a mesh, so in any to any connectivity. And, and of course, the distance supported there, as you noted earlier, it was up to 50 meters. So we initially debuted support up to 50 meters. With FOSS 701, we basically increased the scalability. So we took that core edge topology, increased it from six chassis all the way up to 10 chassis. So you could do a, a two by eight configuration, a four by six configuration, a five by five, basically any different permutation in there, uh, up to 10 chassis total. For the full mesh, we went from three chassis in 7.0 up to nine chassis in a full mesh under 7.0.1 versions of FOSS and later. And then finally, in our FOSS 7.1 release, we introduced support for those longer distance ICL connections. So up to 100 meter with the OM4 cable and the 100 meter QSFPs. And we also introduced new support for our uh, ClearLink diagnostic port or the D port capability. Now on the, eight, or on the 8510 platforms with the ICLs, some of the capabilities of the diagnostic port are a little bit limited. The QSFPs don't have some of the loop back testing, the electrical and optical loop back testing. So some of the tests are, are not available, but the D port capability is there with 7.1 versions of FOSS and later for ICL connections specifically. So you can still uh, test the integrity of the link between two ICL That's ports. That's it, uh, exactly. So yeah. you know, especially for pre-deployment, you want to make sure that your fiber is looking good, everything's healthy, all your physical, your media connectivity is in good shape. You can run this diagnostic port uh, to ensure that everything's good before you go live and before you go into production. Or if you're seeing any sort of intermittent problems, D-Port's a great way to take just particular links down temporarily, test them out without impacting the rest of your production traffic environment. Okay. So Anthony, uh, well, why don't we wrap things up? I think we've covered everything pretty well. So. Thank you very much for joining us today. For more information on ultrascale ICLs, we have a number of different documents and information on brocade.com. Thank you.